Hello there, Mr. Chu. Our SAT review problems. So this is my last video in module four. I will have completed all 27. So problems 25 to 20, module four. I have the three earlier modules, one, two, three, and now completing four with this one that each have 27 problems there on my YouTube channel. And this is my YouTube channel you're watching this on. And the list to find them dif the different problems, the different modules. Each one has its own playlist. All these practice problems were released by the College Board for review for this important test. Some will be easy, some will be hard. They vary in topic from algebra, geometry, and other math classes you take to preparation for the SAT. And I do not group them by their topic. They're listed in the order that they come in the module. Make sure you like this if it's helpful. And you can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and X. Just look for Keith Chu or Mr. Keith e. Chu, Math Extraordinary. Here's the long link. Put that in the browser. It'll take you straight to this. There are links to subscribe. So hopefully you will subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you need to contact me, request a video, ask a question, I do have an email address. I'm pointing to it there. Ask Mr. Chu at gmail.com. Let's get started with problems 25 first. Remember, you can always pause the video, work the problem out on a piece of paper, see if you get it right. So we start with number 25, and on number 5 is talking about an isosceles triangle. It's just, remember, isosceles is the same. So there's going to be two legs. It's a right triangle, which means it's got a hypotenuse. It gives you the length of that hypotenuse at 58 inches. It wants you to find the perimeter in inches. So there's a lot of steps in this. So pause this at this time. Then you can work it out. If you're happy with your answer, start it back up and you'll see me explaining it and you can check for accuracy, correct any mistakes you might make. So remember the two legs of the isosceles triangle will always have the same length. Let x equal the length of each leg. All you're given is the hypotenuse length and we'll use length and we'll use that later. Remember on a right triangle. A and B are the legs. The hypotenuse is C. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared will always be true. It's a right triangle, and they're saying it is. So I can substitute this X, where I said let X equal each leg, in for A and B, and then 58 for the C. So here's my original, and then when I substitute, I've got x squared plus x squared equals 58 squared. And I can simplify this and combine like terms. So on the left, I've got x squared plus x squared, and that equals 2x squared equals 58 squared. Now I'm going to do something that's going to look strange, but it's just something that will be helpful in solving this. I'm going to use the division property of equality. to divide both sides by 2, but I'm not going to simplify the right. I'm going to leave it just like it is, but I am going to simplify the left. So the 2 over 2 ends up being 1, and 1 times x squared will give me x squared, and that's going to equal 58 squared over 2, but I want to multiply that by a special 1. Now, I'm going to tell you why I did that. The reason is, I'm going to have to take and do the inverse of a square, which is a square root. And when I multiply my 2 times 2, I get a number I can find the square root of. Because we need to make it look like your answer choices. So here we've got x squared equals 2 times 58 squared over 4. Now you're saying, yeah, but why don't we multiply this out? Because our answers... A lot of them have 58s in them or half of 58 here. So let's just leave the 50 for now. We could always multiply it later if we don't find the answer in multiple choice. 
So now we got x squared equals 2 times 58 squared over 4, and I do the inverse of a square, which is the square root of x squared, which will give me x, and then the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator, but the square root of 4 is 2, so I can simplify that. Now do you see how it's getting closer? to these answers up here and you're saying yeah but where's the addition sign but we're not done yet because remember it asks for the perimeter not the side length this is the side length right here all right so we know that x is equal to 58 square root of 2 over 2 because i can just rewrite this so that it looks like this. Well, there's B and C both have that exact expression in it. Now let's just answer what the question says. If we know that 58 divided by 2 is 29 squared of 2, now I can substitute this simplified expression to find the perimeter. Well, how do you find the perimeter of a triangle? Well, you add all the sides up. Well, what are the side lengths? Well, they're x and x and 58. So now substitute the 29 square root of 2 plus 29 square root of 2 plus 58 and then simplify that. So 29 square root of 2 plus 29 square root of 2 is 58 square root of 2 plus 58. And if you look, that is going to be 58 plus 58 squared of 2. You can use the property that says I can commute those, the community property of addition. And that correct choice C would be the answer. Hopefully you were able to get that correct. Lots of steps in that one. All right, now let's go to number 26. All right, in number 26, it says in the xy plane, so we just have a coordinate grid, just the normal coordinate grid to use in algebra. A parabola has a vertex of 9, negative 14. Now, let's first of all uh, recall that the vertex is either, either going to be the lowest point or the highest point in a parabola that opens up or down. If the equation of the parabola is written in and it gives you standard form, saying that a, b, and c are constant. Which of the following could be the value of a plus b plus c? Check. And they ask you, what are the values of a, b, and c in the standard form? Lots of steps in this one as well. So, let's go ahead and get started. You can see every dot presents a step. So, Usually, there's a lot of thinking going on in these SAT problems. So, you need to recall from your algebra, algebra 2 or geometry class, that the standard form of a parabola is y equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. That will tell you that hk is the vertex and i know what the vertex is because they gave that to us so now i can substitute the 9 where the h is and the negative 14 where the k is and then use that all right so once i have it substituted in there then i'm gonna have to say well how can i simplify this i can simplify it by taking x minus 9, multiply it by x minus 9, and then distribute the a. So that's the plan. So I take and I write that x minus 9 squared from my formula down here. And now I'm going to multiply that using FOIL. So remember FOIL is first x times x is my x squared. Outer x times negative 9 is negative 9x. Inner negative 9 times x is minus 9x, and last, negative 9 times 9 is 81. 
Now I'm going to take and I'm going to do the distributive property by multiplying the A. I can combine those like terms and that's probably the first thing to do. It's negative 9x plus negative 9x would be negative 18x in the middle. You can do it either way. It doesn't matter because those still are like terms. I didn't do it here. Normally you would take and put negative 18 x and then multiply it by a and when I multiply these or add these two together to combine like terms I would get negative 18 ax so there is my equation and why did I put them in colors because we've got to go back to our original here the standard form and decide what is a what is b what is c well, you notice your A is in red, so A equals A. Your B is in the green, negative 18A will equal B. Left my A out there, it's negative 18A. So I'll put her in there, and then in the yellowish color, 81A minus 14 is C. So 81A minus 14 is C. So, and I had 18, negative 18a down here. I just left it off up here. So if I want to find what a plus b plus c is, I just substitute the values that I have, the red a, negative 18a in green, and 81a minus 14. And then when I combine those, I get a plus negative 18a, which is negative 17a, and negative 17a plus 81a is 64a minus 14. So that is my simplified expression. All right? So if a is positive in a parabola, it means it opens up. But if a is negative, it opens down. So this number in front of here on the left, underneath my picture here, if that's a positive, it opens down. And in the standard form, same thing. If A is positive, it opens up. If it's a negative, it opens down. So that is something else that you learned in your Algebra and Algebra 2 classes. Since the vertex is below the x-axis, and how do I know it's below the x-axis? Because it tells me that the y-coordinate is negative 14. So if you think about that, that xy plane, that means it's below. And it also says what? It has two points that it crosses the x-axis or two roots. That means it's opening up. And that also means that A must be positive. So if I solve 64A minus 14 by adding a 14 to both sides, I'll find what the A would be, the B would be, the C would be, and C if the A is going to be positive. So for choice A, I substitute a negative 23 in for the sum of those. And then what are we going to do? We're going to add a 14 to both sides. So when I add a 14 to the negative 23, I get negative 9. Well, is negative 9 positive? No, it's negative ends up being negative 9 over 64 when I divide by 64. So rule the A out. So I know A is not a possibility. Now we try B. Same thing. We add the 14 and we get a negative 5. And then we divide both sides by 64. And we get negative 5 over 64, which is not positive, which means I know it's not B. Then we do the same thing for C. I add a 14 to both sides. And that begins, becomes a 0 in 64. Divided by, uh, it, uh, each side by 64, I get 0 out of 64, which is 0. That's not positive. I know it can't be C. I'm hoping it's D or it doesn't have any right answers. Well, when I add a 14 to both sides, I get a positive 2. And I divide both sides by 64. And I get 2 over 64, which is positive, which means that the correct answer is D. Again, that was a lot of steps. And I hope you're able to get it right. Now we'll go to the last problem in this problem set, which is number 27. It is an open-ended question about a function. 
It says the function f is defined by f of x equals negative a to the x plus b. So it's an exponential, where a and b are constants. In the xy plane, the graph of y equals f of x minus 15, which means translation down 15, has a y-intercept of 0, negative 99 sevenths. The product of a and b is 65 over 7. What's the value of a? Now, there's a lot involved in here, but it's really not as hard as it may sound. So, very first thing we have to do, we have to substitute negative a the x plus b for f of x in y equals f of x minus 15. So, I have to take and I have to substitute. So, where I've got my f of x here, right here. I'm going to substitute what we said f of x was, which is negative a to the x plus b. So when I substitute it, I get y equals negative a to the x plus b. That was what I substituted for f of x minus 15. And I know that the y-intercept is 0, negative 99 sevenths. That was given. So my 0 is going to be my x. My y is going to be my negative 99 sevenths, and I'm going to substitute it into this equation. So it's just pretty much using the substitution property and understanding what that means. So here's my y, negative 99 sevenths equals negative a to the zero power, which is my x, plus b minus 15. Well, you have to know what a to the zeroth is. That's going to be 1. And then the opposite of 1 is negative 1. Whenever I simplify that. I just repeated that line for some reason. So here's my negative 1 here, right? And so I can take my negative 1 minus 15. And that gives me negative 16 when I use the... Com combining like terms when I simplify it. Now I'm going to use a subtraction property of equality. I'm actually using addition of equality. So that's a typo. So I will just write that in so that it will. So it's the addition property of equality. That POE stands for property of equality. All right, so what am I going to add? Well, i got to get rid of the 16. I'm going to add a 16 to both sides. But to find the common denominator, I'm going to need to get a 7 in the denominator of a 16 over 7, which ends up being 112 over 7. Well, if 112 over 7 is 16, it cancels out here. And then I can combine the like terms here. So 99 sevenths plus 112 sevenths is 13 sevenths. These two cross out, and that's what b equals. Now I'm going to substitute that b equals 13 sevenths in my a, b equals 65 over 7. So why do I have a, b equals 65 over 7? Look at my question. The product of a and b, so that means a, b, and then the word is is equals 65 over 7. So that's what I'm going to substitute in. So it's a times 13 sevenths equals 65 over sevenths. So I'm going to multi use the multiplication property of equality. And I'm not going to multiply by 13 sevenths. I'm going to multiply by 7 thirteenths. Why would I multiply by 7 thirteenths? Because I need to get a by itself. So let me change that to 7 thirteenths there. And I multiply both sides by that. And what happens? Well, we got cancellation here. Greater than denominator cancel. So I could cross this out because that's a common factor of 7. The 13 and the 13 cancel. I can cross that out. Common factor of 13. My 7s cancel here. And then common factor of 13, 13 goes into 13 one time. And 13 goes into 65 five times. So it's 5 over 1. So if A equals 5 over 1, then A equals 5. 
And that is my answer. And hopefully you're able to get that right as well. So now this completes module four. So my next posting of SAT problems will be out of module five. And there's a total of six of these that I was able to find that the college board has approved of. And so I will start in five as soon as I get time to write the new PowerPoint. Make sure you follow me on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and X. It's all under Keith Chu or Keith E. Chu. And sometimes I have things about math like I'm called Keith E. Chu. Mr. Keith E. Chu, Math Extraordinaire on X and uh, on TikTok. Keith Chu on Facebook. So just check that out and in my as well. So now I've got one, two, three, and four modules with 27 problems in each one that are in my playlist on my YouTube channel for you to review. Here is my long link to my YouTube channel. You can also click on different subscribe buttons to subscribe if you got questions. Send them to me at askmrchu at gmail.com. I'd love to answer them. Love to help you out with your math. Okay, so help me spread the word. I'm Mr. Chu, and I have several different types of videos that I post. I post videos about algebra that I've named the program after my 13-year-old peekapoo. I also have geometry videos that I named after my three-year-old Italian cheap dog. I have arithmetic and pre-algebra that I named after my cat. And then I have math minutes that I have topics that I talk about, just random topics that will help students in math. I also have um, these SAT programs. And then I started a new thing that goes with my math minutes that is called math minis. So remember, even when you have power shortages, because my power blinked, that's why it went blank for a minute, that I'm Mr. Chu, and I want to help you in your math class. So make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.